problem with drawing people on the internet is that people on the internet are hidden behind encryption. Yeah, but then when you finally everyone see them, everything. you know exactly, hey, yeah, that guy is from the internet. I'm going to encrypt myself. You do that. It's good policy. All right. Hey uh, there, Darren. Hey uh, there, Tom Merritt. Thanks for joining me. I am very excited. I'm actually very excited about the post show, but this is the pre pre show. The post post show is actually the best part, but that's not its own thing yet. Yeah, no, you can't yeah. wait. You can't wait for it. Yeah, it's, it's podcast inception here. It's beyond beyond. Mm -hmm. You have to know somebody. I can't even get into that. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, that's <laughs> gonna that's gonna require show. a wrist badge. Yeah. yeah, a wrist badge. What is that? It's like right. a band. Oh, uh, no, a note for those watching on Ace Detect channel. These videos uh, will be uploaded to this channel for the time being, uh, when we can, and on a erratic schedule. But if you want them fast, as soon as they're done, subscribe to youtubecom show, the new home of these videos. I know some of you aren't going to. That's fine. Can't no, it's, it's an easy URL to remember if you're looking for Daily Tech News Show. Yeah, you'd think. Yeah. Although you I kept mistyping it yesterday, so I'm not going to judge. What, what do you like to accidentally call DTNS? Oh, yesterday I called it Daily Tech New and then Daily Tech News. -sh. <laughs> so. <laughs> hey, man, that's like me always writing my name as Keb. K-E-B. Lenmo. You know, uh, Keb and I go way back. <laughs> All right, I, read, should... I, I accidentally write my name as Keb or Ken about 300 times a day. Ken, I could see, yeah. All right, let's do this show. Here we go. A minuscule portion of the Daily Tech News show was brought to you by me. Because I went to patreon.com slash acedetect and donated a dollar a month to a podcast that I really enjoy. Won't you join me? This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, June 19th, 2015. I'm Tom Merritt. Joining me today is Darren Kitchen of Hack5.0. So good to be here, Tom. Coming in from the Threatwire stage today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, Threatwire is kicking it, man. You guys are, are, are just blowing it away with that. It's Patrick Mondays, right? Shannon Wednesdays and you on Fridays? Yeah, oh, oh, we're going to throw you for a loop because I think Shannon's taking next Monday. What? 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 I know rotation Keep. of the security, privacy, and internet freedom. That's a that's a good way to you know keep things shaken, keep yeah. things interesting. Totally. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, also with us as he is most Fridays, Mr. Len Peralta to illustrate the show. How are you, sir? I'm doing well, uh, and I'm coming to you from the really really dirty second floor be bedroom in my house. It's a <laughs> lovely dirty second floor bedroom. <laughs> Thank you. I should probably, really, there's no bed I in clean there, up though. in here. It's your office, right? Yeah, you don't even have the bowl of spaghetti on the end of the desk. You're fine. Hey, man, it's rigatoni night tonight. So rigatoni. Get ready. Rigatoni. Get ready. Nice. Yeah. What phase of web development does rigatoni represent? I don't know. Let's find out. I leave that as an exercise <laughs> to the user. Here's some headlines. The next web reports that Twitter is testing two new types of pages. You thought it was enough yesterday with the whole Project Lightning announcement? No, these are real. You can actually find them right now. Uh, first, businesses now have dedicated pages where users can find information, images, related tweets, prices, uh, and in great news for businesses, users can buy products right from the app or website. Just click on the Buy It From Twitter button now. Uh, if you want to. The second page is called Collections, where anybody can aggregate products and places that might be of interest to your followers. Uh, I was trying it out earlier today. Uh, I don't know what I would use it for, but if you want to know what types of products Reese Witherspoon and William Shatner really love, today's your lucky day. Tom, I, I feel really sad saying this, but I feel like this is something that I would have liked maybe if Twitter did in like 2008. Maybe that's just me personally not being as, as hyped as I used to be about the service. But uh, I'm wondering how much of this is going to become like one of those features like lists that like 99% of the people just don't get. I imagine the business pages will find their niche, right? For, for businesses who want to promote like, hey, find all of our products over on the page thing. Uh, the collections really does have a list-like feel. 
unless somebody figures it out, right, and, and cracks it and says, oh, you know who has a great collection is Reese Witherspoon. And then we all start making collections along those lines. But yeah, kind of not, that one's not as obvious to me quite yet. Yeah. They just got to keep at it. USA Today reports Google says it will honor requests to remove nude or sexually explicit images posted on the internet without consent, the same way it honors requests to remove personal information like bank accounts and social security numbers. Now, I kind of misspoke there. They'll honor requests to remove links from their search engines. They can't actually uh, remove the source material itself. An online form will launch in the coming weeks for submitting requests. Google normally only removes links subject to a valid legal request, but they're adding this as one of their exceptions. Right. I spoke to my co-host Shannon earlier about this, who said, quote, I'll drink to that. <laughs> uh, you can read more at snubsy.com and see why. Uh, personally, I'm, I'm always like really conflicted as a, like a First Amendment lover. I'm always really challenged when it comes to any sort of censorship. But this is something I can really get behind. Uh, and well, I have to like remind myself that Google isn't like a public service. They are a private entity. And they can't remove what's on the internet. They're just the phone book or a phone book. Even the legal principle of freedom of expression in various countries has limits. Uh, there is speech that is not acceptable to the general public, and so you can't yell fire in a crowded theater, for instance, right? Uh, and so for a private company to say, you know what, we would like to make an engine that arbitrarily and without judgment on content uh, ranks what it thinks is the most interesting links. But when it comes to child porn, we're going to say, no, we don't want that. When it comes to your personal bank information, we're going to say, no, we want that. And now they're saying when it comes to revenge porn, no, we're not going to allow that either. You know what I actually, I think the, the most thing, uh, the, uh, the number one thing that resonates in this story actually, and it kind of ties along with what we'll be talking about later, is this didn't come out because of some right to be forgotten legislation from the EU or something like that. This is Google just making a choice. And it's really awesome to see kind of the policies that are being made just by companies that are doing good. Yeah, and th it is really interesting to compare it to the right to be forgotten, which Google sort of passively is resisting because they say, we don't believe that's a correct implementation. And it's all a matter of opinion. The European government says, no, this is definitely a right. Google says, mm, we don't think it should be because we think it has a chilling effect, et cetera, et cetera. And again, it's not about, well, if you allow some speech, you have to allow it all. It's all a discussion about where the line is. The U.S. FCC has clarified its interpretation of a 1991 consumer protection law to assert that text messages are the same as phone calls when it comes to robocalls, and phone carriers may block robocalls and text messages to consumers if asked. Wall Street Journal reports that despite the creation of a national do not call list, the FCC still receives more complaints about robocalls than any other issue. Uh, the FCC will also make it easier to remove con consent for robocalls. Uh, you have to have a consent to do a robocall. You can remove that consent, but the FCC is saying, well, you've had to jump through a few too many hoops. We're going to make it easier for you. This is actually really interesting, again, in talking about what uh, our main discussion story today, in that here it is, citizens looking to the government, looking to the FTC to change what is uh, really a technological, I'm sorry, the FCC to change what is really a technological problem that is very similar to the spam in your inbox. You can't have an open form of communications without having it open to everything. But we've tackled the spam issue by having good filters. And the same could be said to uh, phone calls and text messages. Say, for instance, if you have an Android phone, a, a recent one where you can actually enable what they call a priority mode, where you can actually have a white list of only these phone numbers can call me or text me during certain hours. Uh, there's so many technological solutions to this and I just find it fascinating that we what begging the government to create a list that will probably not be um, be respected by said robocallers you know well they they the robocalls robocall people do get sued uh, so the, so the lists have proved to be somewhat effective they're not hundred percent effective but I know what you're saying is you can take these matters into your own hands and maybe have a little more efficacy or just handle who is able to call you better, uh, how you use your phone number. There's all kinds of approaches to it. Personally, there's already a law in the books. And I think to me, the most important thing here is that the FCC said, yeah, text messages, robocalls, you, you Congress can decide if there needs to be laws against these, but for the purpose of the law, we're going to interpret them the same way. And I think that's right. Yeah. 9 to 5 Mac reports that the original iPad mini has disappeared from Apple's website and is no longer available to purchase new 
from the Apple Store. Uh, it was introduced back in October 2012, if you recall, so it's the last of the non-Retina tablets. Refurbished minis are still available from the Apple Store for 209 bucks. New iPad minis can still be bought from third-party resellers until they run out of stock, but it sounds like that's it for non-Retina tablets. You know, Tom, I actually learned this from sources close to the matter, but after losing the phablet front, Apple is coming back hard with the first ever 7.9-inch iPhone. Take that, Samsung Note. It's not true. That's what's it's happening. Not, it yes. And Gadget passes along a report from Juventud Rebelde that Cuba's telecom company will open Wi-Fi hotspots in 35 locations around the country starting in July. An hour will cost you two bucks with speed capped at one megabyte per user, according to the quote. I'm assuming they mean one megabit per second uh, is the top speed, or maybe they only get to download one megabyte. I don't know. Uh, the 35 Wi-Fi hotspots around Cuba. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. give it more Wi-Fi. Just throw some more Wi-Fi at it. You know how I feel about that. I do. You do. <laughs> I do. Reuters reports Nokia is finally admitting it wants to get back to the phone business. Nokia can't sell its own phones until 2016 due to its agreement to sell its handset business to Microsoft, which it did a while ago. But Nokia CEO Rajiv Suri told Germany's Manager magazine that Nokia, quote, will look for suitable partners to design and license phones to be manufactured under the Nokia brand name. Now, Nokia doesn't have factories for this anymore, uh, but they can do what Apple does. They can design them. They can license them and then have somebody else build them. They could even go one better and let somebody else sell them just using the Nokia name if they want. Let's look at some news from you. These come from our subreddit at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Uh, get in there and do some voting, folks. D8UV would like you to know that the Heinz company had a great idea. Uh, they put a QR code on their ketchup bottles so the ketchup enthusiasts could design their own labels by, you know, scanning the QR code, go to a website, design their own label. A German man named Daniel Carell thought that's a great idea. So he scanned the QR code from his ketchup bottle on his phone and he was directed to German porn site Fundorado. Turns out Heinz ran the contest between 2012 and 2014 and then shut it down. The link expired and someone else took over the domain. Unlike the ketchup in Daniel Carell's fridge, apparently the link expired. Carell wrote to Heinz on Facebook saying, your ketchup isn't really for underage people. Heinz's social media team apologized, said Carell could still design his own label. And porn site Fundorado offered Carell a free year subscription to their site. So pretty good day for Daniel Carell. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I just, okay, so here's my thought on the matter. To any company that's going to try to do this, whether it be social media or a QR code on your product, learn this one beautiful part of your HTTP server. It's called a 301 redirect. And you can use it to say, for instance, have HeinzKetchup.com slash whatever you want go to anywhere you want. So you don't have to put some domain on the And then keep the that bottle. domain name. Yeah. <laughs> Because I don't think they're going to lose HeinzKetchup.com anytime you, soon. You wouldn't think, but, I, you know. Yeah. But, you know, maybe they forget to do it, and then, you know, some porn site pops up on HeinzKetchup.com. Sure. Are like, Whoa. That's yeah. not cat soup. Well, uh, the lesson to me is always use a condiment. Star Fury Zeta <laughs> submitted the IT World article that the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Ninth Circuit <laughs> rules Thursday. Uh, why are you laughing? The Google Earth images can be used as evidence in court. <laughs> Sayano Lizarraga Tirado claims he was on the Mexico side of the border when U.S. agents arrested him and charged him with illegal reentry. The government has introduced GPS coordinates recorded at the arrest and used Google Earth to show that the location was on the U.S. side of the border. Court determined that the machine results cannot be dismissed as hearsay, though they could be contested on grounds of accuracy. And uh, significantly, Lizarraga Tirado is not combating them on on the accuracy portion. Man, you are just, like, killing it with the pronunciation today. Uh, anyway. Gracias. Yes. Tom, I don't know any of the details of this case, except it does bring to mind one very important fact that I think should, like, really be touched on here. We talk so much about surveillance, and we never talk about surveillance. Are you familiar with that concept? Uh, is that where you just sue someone into stopping looking at you? 
No, no. So surveillance is actually the opposite of surveillance. It's kind of like the Ravens. It's who watches the watchers. The concept is kind of like uh, tied in with other things like life blogging and things of that nature. Oh, but okay. Gotcha. If you imagine, and, and this is really something great like Google Glass wearers or anything like that, especially if you're in, say, a protest situation, to actually have a recording of you know, the video of what you're seeing Right, and as well as say, for instance, if it were tied into GPS and would always have a record of where you've been. Now that's scary when it's a government tracking you through your cell phone and things of that nature. But it's actually empowering when you have the same kind of data that you can give to a court and contest traffic violation where a cop got unruly, or in this case, which side of the border are you on? So I, I just need to throw that out there because I know a lot of people aren't familiar with the term surveillance, and I think it's apropos here. Yeah, it is, and and I think it helps clarify what's going on here. What the judge Judge, see, what Lisa Raga Tirado claimed was, hey, that's a computer, that's hearsay, that's not an expert witness, that's not evidence, that's, that's just hearsay. And the judge said, mm, not hearsay. Uh, you can contest the accuracy of the machine, but you can't say the machine is just asserting something without backing. Uh, we're going to call that evidence. And so that's when surveillance, as you're saying, would come into play is to say, oh, well, I have this GPS tracker of my own that shows that I was on the Mexico side of the border. Uh, and then you would have to get into contesting which of the machines was more accurate. He isn't doing that from what I can tell. Uh, so he was just trying to get the evidence dismissed and it didn't work. And that's a look at the headlines. So an interesting uh, sponsored post up on Wired today. Now, it was sponsored by Nokia, so I don't think there's any conflict between the content of the post and the sponsor. But it was about something called Global Solution Networks, uh, which is a company or, or an organization that was for, uh, founded by management professor Don Tapscott in 2013 to study new models of global problem solving. Uh, from their website, they say, enabled by the digital revolution, multi-stakeholder self-governing networks are transforming how we solve global global problems. Now, the contention of Tapscott, and he's, he's been on a tear. Yeah, you look on the internet for this guy and you see him everywhere writing pretty much the same thing. He's definitely on message, is saying, yeah, non-governmental organizations have tran been transformed by digital technology to the point that they can now do things that governments cannot. Uh, governments are often debt-ridden, uh, they're often paralyzed by bureaucracy or politics, uh, and they can't confront poverty, starvation, uh, water uh, scarcity, etc. And so, uh, these new things that he calls global solution networks can step into the gap. Now, here's how he defines one. Uh, they attack a global problem. They're not a localized, localized issue. Uh, they're multi-stakeholder in, in that they involve civil organizations that we would consider non-governmental organizations, private businesses, and governmental organizations. So they bring everybody in. Uh, they use the internet as well as other digital tools, and they're not controlled by either a state government uh, and by state, I mean any kind of national government or a corporation, that they are somewhat independent. If you're like, okay, wait a minute, how is this just not an NGO? Well, some NGOs would qualify for this, and other things that you wouldn't think of as a non-governmental organization qualify. Uh, for example, he breaks it down into 10 different types of these networks. A knowledge network example is Wikipedia. It's, it's global, uh, it's multi-stakeholder, nobody controls it particularly except the foundation, which is controlled by multiple stakeholders. The Red Cross is an operational network. So there are older things that qualify in here. Uh, the Internet Governments Forum is a policy example. Code for America is a platform example. IETF, the WWC, ICANN are all examples of this. Global Water Partnership is a, an example of a networked uh, version of this. So the idea is that, hey, this is the next level in solving humanity's problems. Let's move past national governments, which are kind of hidebound uh, by tradition and bureaucracy, and let's all work together to use what we've learned as humanity to solve problems. Sounds pretty good, right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there, there's kind of like some movements even within the hacker realm sort of similar to this. Uh, one is called I Am the Cavalry, where it's just like w the hackers do a really good job of noticing things that are broken, and sometimes they are things that like, you know, need to get fixed and need to get fixed like immediately. So uh, these are the people that will actually like really take action when it comes to things like medical devices with gaping vulnerabilities that could like kill someone and things of that nature. Uh, so uh, 
I, I don't know. The, 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 I don't know this man's agenda, but I do love the research that he's doing because it's really cool to see like all of these organizations, all of these NGOs, um, and, and kind of just <laughs> realize like, dude, this is so great. This is it's beautiful to see such good happening in the world that's not just tied to governments and 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 control, but it's because people come together for a greater good um, and, and not like owning it. I don't know. Yeah, and and I think that. Global Solution Networks uh, isn't the only example of this. OpenStreetMap, Metal Freak just pointed out in the chat room, is a great example uh, of this. So when the Haiti uh, crisis happened, OpenStreetMap went in and helped figure out where things were that you couldn't tell because of, of the fact that they had been wiped away uh, and, and helped like redo the maps of Haiti. Uh, BitNation. Right. The, the beautiful quote actually in, in that case was just that rather than the aid workers having to reach out to satellite operators, the operators started almost immediately to reach out to the aid workers. And yeah. so that's just, I think what it is is we're talking about inherently humans are good people, right? And we don't need governments to facilitate good. Well, governments are made of people. They're just organizations <laughs> just of people. Just like soil and green. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, if, if that group of people isn't doing uh, what needs to be done, then maybe another group of people can get together and do what needs to be done. Uh, BitNation is another example I found that provides the same services as traditional governments as far as like contracts and identity verification, et cetera, but in a geographically unbound, decentralized and voluntary way. It's powered by the blockchain, Bitcoin 2.0 blockchain, but using that to verify verify contracts. Now it's very experimental and it's very idealistic, but it's basically trying to demonstrate that if you were to get on board, and they don't have any illusions that everybody's going to start using this tomorrow, but they're trying to show if you were to get on board, this could work for people. You don't need to necessarily have a centralized organization anymore to verify certain things like contracts, identity, and more. No, you know how I feel. Uh, you know, packets, not passports, right? Uh, I'll tell you a real quick story. Uh, and I've, I've used this example a few times, but the ITU, the, uh, the United Nations International Telecommunications Union, in Dubai in December of 2012 had a closed-door proceeding, which they called the World Conference on Information Technology. And the concept there was that they were going to pass some updated international telecommunications regulations that hadn't been updated since 1988. So a lot had happened in telecommunications between 88 and now, uh, especially the ITU wanted to expand its role in governing the internet. And many people, uh, especially in the West, argued like, well, don't we already have things like the Internet Society and the Internet Engineering Task Force and we've got the, um, you know, all of those different organizations like ICANN that take care of that kind of thing and they're all made up of, well, multi-stakeholders. And so there was like a huge backlash on like this like, what government? Get off my internet, right? And so the ITU actually tried uh, a multi-stakeholder thing. Uh, two months later, I actually, you know, it's why I was able to go to Geneva and actually participate in this. And I was there with other corporate and private interest groups, things like, you know, the EFF and PayPal and other people that have an interest in the internet. And it was really weird to see how uh, the nations were very unhappy about that. Uh, and I think the freedom, that's actually what spawned the Freedom Online Coalition, which is 26 members, uh, most of North America, most of uh, the European Union, Japan, and Australia. And the concept there is these are the nations that are like, hey, look, and this is just one little microcosmic example of like governance in action when it comes to the multi-stakeholder kind of bottom-up approach, which is all of these different private participants of this new world that we've created that is cyberspace can manage it. They don't need us, right? Uh, but then you've got the, the, the other nations that feel disenfranchised like China or Iran who don't feel like they have the same kind of say in that more Western approach and want like government control of the internet. So that, that's kind of like my go-to example of this. Yeah, and what fascinates me about this is it combines so many things that the internet has spawned. Uh, so multi-stakeholder governance, uh, like you mentioned, the IETF uh, or ICANN uh, have blazed that trail. Uh, open source has shown how it doesn't really matter what organization you're a part of, you can contribute to a project uh, and further advanced. And a lot of this has, has, has an open source platform feel to it. Some of it is in fact under open source licenses. Uh, you know, and then there's things like the 92 Earth Summit in Rio did not produce an agreement on deforestation. So again, multi-stakeholders, businesses and environmentalists and community leaders 
got together to create the Forest Stewardship Council, which attempts to preserve forests and acknowledge everybody's needs. Yes, the businesses need to have a certain amount of lumber. Let's figure out how to do that in a balanced way that's sustainable. Uh, and this is another thing that, that uh, Mr. Tapscott bandies about, but it's true. 93% of the CEOs polled in an Accenture UN Global Compact Study report that, sustain, that sustainability issues must be a part of their core businesses. 93% say that now. Now you could say, oh, they're just paying lip service to it, but I, it's because they understand that it's bad for their business if the world falls apart. Uh, a sustainable and stable world is important to prosperity for everyone, uh, not just a certain segment of the population that you may not care about. Right. Yeah, I, I, I'm so on board with this. I just love that uh, this research kind of brings together and lets you kind of like visualize. Like, I knew of all of these tiny little uh, aspects of this, like the EFF and things of that nature, but it's good to be able to see like, whoa, there's like a movement happening, and it's really beautiful that the internet and its kind of like ethos has fostered that kind of stuff, and I want to live in that world that is made up of the Wikipedias and the GitHubs and the open source and not the invisible threat of terrorism. Now, some people argue that uh, the move for governments to even take on these kinds of problems only happened post-World War II in the era of the UN, and that's a fair point. Uh, and many of the problems are actually caused or exacerbated by, by governments as well. Uh, and that is a fair point. But that doesn't change the fact that we have the problems and we need to figure out the best way to go about solving them. And I, I definitely feel like bringing in multiple interests to who all agree that the problem exists and needs to be solved to figure out to solve it is a much more productive way than all fighting each other, uh, you know, uh, on one side or the other. Like, let's jump past that. And now I'm going to, I've, I've been trying to be fairly balanced about this. I'm going to jump off the edge in a crazy town uh, and say, in, in a very long-term way, this could be pointing the way to the next generation of how we govern ourselves. Uh, the problem that monarchies had is they became unable to grapple with the problems they were invented to solve and they were deeply in debt and they were out of touch with their own populace. Sound familiar? <laughs> this, these kinds of organizations are a very early version of a reaction to that same problem with current governments. So I don't know whether, you know, this is the next thing after, uh, you know, there's feudalism and then there's republics and maybe this is this is next. I don't know. That's why that's crazy town talk. But it is interesting to say yeah, I mean, we may be seeing the leading edge of what will someday evolve into the, the next wave of how humanity manages its own problems. Yeah, I mean, but, you know, but with balance, that's the hope. That's the idea of the multi-stakeholder is it's not that it's privatization versus government. It's just that it's everybody, you know, all of those special interest groups having kind of common ground with said governments and, and uh, private industry and things of that nature, because you swing too far and, you, and you've got, you know, all sorts of problems. And that, that's just the case with anything. You don't want a monoculture. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you, you want to actually come up with a solution that most people can agree on. And despite what you may hear on television news, <laughs> most people actually agree on things. Uh, it just doesn't make entertaining television to present it that way. Uh, so if we could take advantage of that, we could actually possibly solve some stuff. I think it's, I think it's worth looking into. I'm skeptical uh, at the same time. You know, I don't want to be, uh, you know, I, I feel like it's very easy to say these things. It's very hard to make them work. Uh, and we're not seeing too many of them really solve anything big yet. But there are a lot sure, of little victories. Sure, but we're seeing some there. amazing examples. I mean, you can't discredit, you know, TED Talks and Wikipedia and uh, the Melinda and uh, Bill and Melinda, Bill Gates, Melinda Foundation. Gates Foundation. And, and Absolutely. There you go. The Internet Governance Forum. So like, these are all really huge. I mean, and not just that, but like the watchdog groups. Like, I was actually surprised to not see on this list WikiLeaks. Maybe it's too controversial, but uh, there's also you know Human Rights Watch and yeah. other such similar uh, agenda organizations. So, yeah, it's just good to see that. Anyway, it's a fascinating topic to look into uh, and, and a really interesting trend that's going beyond, you know, it, it's the Red Cross was sort of the earliest example of this sort of thing, which says, you know what, we really don't care about your politics or your, you know, what, what your stake is in your government. We just, we just want to help people. We want to help people fix, fix some right. stuff that everybody agrees needs to be fixed. No, no, you're right. This has been going on for a long time. The Sierra Club is another example yeah, of that. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, let's get to our pick of the day. Uh, first of all, Steve, who sent us the pick of the day, liked our discussion uh, on robotics. Uh, he said uh, it's an area that he's been paying closer attention to because, as you stated, we are now getting to the point where we have the option to buy robotics for our homes. One point he wanted to raise is the impact this has as the population ages. He notes that Pew has highlighted a population pyramid, a large base of young people with a small peak of older adults, is turning into a solid bar. That means we won't have enough caregivers to take care of us in the same way that people are cared for today. While we may not all get a Rosie the Robot yet, we are seeing massive advances. So here's a related pick of the day. Uh, that's how we get into the pick of the day part. The movie Robot and Frank uh, talks about an ex-jewel thief whose kids get him a robot to take care of him. And it's a really enjoyable film that sort of displays this issue that Steve is talking about. Uh, he says, really enjoyable film. Maybe as we get robot caregivers, we'll also need a few extra robot security guards uh, to stop people like Robot and Frank from stealing your jewels. Uh, but it's, good. it's a good movie. Actually, it's a really fun movie. We talked about it on Frame Rate back in the day. Uh, and uh, you can check it out. Uh, we'll have an IMDb link or lots of places that you, can, uh, that you can go watch Robot and Frank. Have you ever seen that? No, I haven't. I, it's just got me thinking, though, like, what will happen when the robots get sick? Will there be robots for them? Uh, yeah, we'll create meta-robots at that really point. I really hope so. That will take care no, of the robots. No, I love this. Yeah. I, Send I don't your think picks. that having a relationship with a robot is going to be weird in the future. Who says you're not having one right now? Tom, we weren't supposed to talk about the Tom Merritt.sh quite Send yet. Send your picks to feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and you can find my picks as robotic as they may be, at dailytechnewsshow.com slash picks. couple of messages before we get out of here. Uh, Mike from Wet and Windy Western Australia thinks I'm brilliant because I inspired him to come up with a solution to something. I didn't do anything. He says, your comment on garage door openers being a little insecure led to a flash of inspiration. I've been setting up a Belkin Wemo LED light bulb camera motion sensor and switch in my home. It occurred to me that I could set up two-factor authentication for my garage door by using a Wemo switch as well as the garage door remote. As I arrive home, I use the app on my phone to turn on the Wemo switch, which then supplies power to the door opener. Then I use the remote to trigger the door opener, presto. Even if somebody spoofs my remote while I'm not home, the door won't open because it doesn't have power. Now he admits this won't stop someone from physically forcing the door, uh, but he's like a couple of anti-personnel minds should fix that part. <laughs> I love it. Yes, you have to. Yeah, you have to go full zombies on my lawn. Um, let's just hope his Wi-Fi never goes out. But no, that's that's really awesome stuff. The thing that I've noticed in the commercial two-factor authentication uh, uh, facilities management stuff, as I looked into a lot of that moving into the Act Five warehouse, was that um, a lot of them just have like a bypassed key which can most likely be bumped, and it's, it's kind of sad. That in a lot of, in fact, it's indicative of a lot of two-factor authentication systems. There's always like, you know, I can reset my Google password using text message. So. Right, there was an interesting article today that was making the rounds on Hacker News uh, about how to trick someone into sending them their, their text message code. Uh, oh by pretend, you know, well, social engineering will always prevail. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I like this idea of like having a speed bump, having a, a second factor, not really a second factor of authentication, but you know, like, hey, uh, you got to have both my app and the power and uh, the code to the door. That's kind of cool. At that point, you don't even have to care about the code to the door. Mm hmm. Christian wrote in and said, I really enjoyed yesterday's discussion on technology and companionship. It brought to mind Mary Meeker's 2015 Internet Trend Report, where she discussed messaging leaders. Apps like WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, WeChat, Snapchat started out as straightforward messaging platforms, but are now providing things like payments, games, taxi services, even food delivery. I think this transformation is fascinating because a more traditional software mindset would be to solve a particular problem like food delivery, then tack a social element on as an additional feature. But we're seeing my Models emerge where human connection is at the heart of the service, where the social is the platform, and then additional value is added from there. In my mind, these types of approaches are a much better reflection of who and what we are, and hence what we really want from our technology. Uh, so human relationships as a platform is essentially what Christian is identifying. Yelp for people. Would you like it? Or would you be <laughs> deathly afraid? I think it was called the Facebook Back in the oh, day. you're right. I would like to rate you and poke you or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm. How about I just do a who is? 
<laughs> Can you do a who is on, on? Well, once we get like actual namespace for people's names, then you can just do a who is on right. anybody. Yeah. My, my child is just going to be named with an IP6 address. Yeah. They'll yeah. never be able to change their name. No. no. But you'll always be able to locate them. Little E uh, well, colon FF colon 20 colon 4. Anyway, yes. Well, we're going <laughs> to get that. We're going to get the distributed name, uh, the D&D stuff. So we won't even need, won't even need, uh, well, we'll need oh, you name. So you won't even DNS. need IPv6 like, at that point. Yeah. You're on a totally different internet, Tom. Mm -hmm. This is what happens when you're an AI. Yeah, yeah. Uh, living in multiple times at once. Really confusing. But that is it for us. Thank you, Darren Kitchen, hack5.org, H-A-K-5.org. Uh, we talked a little bit about what's going on with Threatwire, but uh, what, what else is happening in the hack palace over there? Oh, man, yeah. We just had a great Threatwire today. We're talking about some zero-day attacks on Apple that they may have been, like, ignoring for months and months. Really fun stuff there that breaks out of sandboxes. Uh, but over on youtube.com slash hack5, that's a really convenient way to see all, all the stuff we do goes up on the tubes and uh, or hak5.org you'll find uh, hack5 with Shannon Morris myself as well as threatwire a rotation of Shannon Morris Patrick Norton and myself uh, tech thing with Shannon and Patrick we've got metasploit minute which is epic uh, if you ever wanted to learn hacking from the ground up uh, the metasploit minute series actually walks you from the installation of one of the uh, most epic and most used uh, penetration testing tools uh, all the way to like how to exfiltrate data out of network and pivot through networks and stuff. So that's a highly recommended one. And if you need to get the basics, Shannon does hack tip. So there's so much stuff on the channel, I should say, and um, we'd love to have you. We're, we're coming up on 10 years in August and almost at 200,000 subscribers. So we're very excited to hit some milestones. If you want to see the hacking, don't spell it with a C, H-A-K-5 dot org. You're on Len fire, Peralta <laughs> has been drawing the world uh, on his back during this show. How are you doing, Len? What do you What do you got for us? Yeah, it's uh, it, it, you know, before show we talked about what the internet would look like if they were to solve the world's problems. This is my version of what I think it looks like, and I don't want to take a little. <laughs> that's a pretty important topic that you guys were talking about, so I'm trying to come up with something sort of funny around it. But this is, you know, if we gave the internet up instead of a government. Uh, the internet, the uh, the opportunity to save the world. Uh, this is what I think it would look like. You'd have a cute little cat that would carry, you know. And then we'd also name all the different world, all the different <laughs> places in the world, yes. you know, different things like Utopia and and uh, Wikilandia. And of course, the one that already sounds like a place is uh, Disapora. Diaspora? You know, I think Wiki Diaspora. Wikilandia. <laughs> I think the Wikilandia is in the Netherlands, actually. That's, that's is it? definitely a place. I it think is. that's yeah. I think that's where it would be. But uh, but yeah, this is where it would be. This is this is what I think the internet oh, yeah. carrying the world uh, on its back uh, or or solving the world's problems would look yeah. like. I, I, I love that just... the cat has its own too. Yeah, you know, no, I think that's, has its that's own brilliant. version. Actually, the, the cat internet is where they watch videos of people. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Playing with string. They're always eating. <laughs> exactly. exactly. Uh, being, yeah. Is that Iceland? Because I think that would fit if you had like Wikilandia, Utubia, Bitcoinia, and just Iceland. Iceland is already. <laughs> Iceland is the little guy up here in the yeah. corner. York, York. Yeah. <laughs> right there. In the sugar cubes. There's Iceland. <laughs> it just, it, I mean, it's just already a digital Aww. place. Yeah. Oh, I love I it. You write that in there, actually. Okay. Really, really small. Oh, man. <laughs> Iceland. So this is fantastic. Uh, I'm Len. getting my copy right now. If, uh, if folks want to get a copy, store. they can go to lemperaltastore.com. Uh, right. But there's also a secret way that Len tells you about every week uh, to get <laughs> digital versions of everything he makes. Yeah, you know, if you uh, – if I have a Patreon. Uh, it's pretty easy to find. It's patreon.com forward slash Len. And if you back the DTNS lover level, you will get each one of these drawings I do every single week free uh, with your pledge uh, as a digital file. So uh, it's it's uh, it's it's you know you can pledge as much as you want or as little as you, as as little as you want and you'll get them all, uh, and uh, they make great iPhone backgrounds or Apple or I, uh, Android backgrounds things for your uh, for your computer, it's just a really good way uh, and it's safe for the environment as well. They could make Windows phone backgrounds. Or Windows phone backgrounds. backgrounds. Exactly. All <laughs> just, let's name them all. Let's name iPad, every iPad, iPad mini. Well, not iPad minis anymore, but you know. That's yeah. Well, you can get one refurbished, I guess. But uh, yeah, so check that out. Uh, Patreon.com slash Len. Yes. Just, just Len. 
That's just Len. Uh, thank you, Len Peralta. And thank you to our patrons, 5,084 of you. you. can pat yourself on the back right now and say, I'm the boss of Tom uh, and Jenny and Roger and Veronica and Darren and everybody else uh, because you are supporting the show. Now, there's a bunch of you out there giving money uh, in other ways through PayPal or maybe going and buying a shirt or a DTNS mug. Wouldn't you like to drink a coffee out of that? That's another way to support the show. It's all there at dailytechnewsshow.com slash support and we thank every single one of you who support the show even if it's just by telling folks hey you gotta you should watch daily tech news show it's pretty cool our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com you can give us a call 51259daily listen to the show live monday through friday at 4 30 eastern at player.alphageekradio.com and visit our website dailytechnewsshow.com we'll be back on monday with brecky thomason as our guest talk to you then The show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> we solved the world's problems. That's yes, a great did. show. Yes. What should we call this one? Uh, we should most certainly call it Always Use a Condiment. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, was that even voted on? Yes. And it is the okay. number one vote getter by. Oh my gosh! Long. Yeah, it's a runaway. Oh, yeah. You're right. There you go. Yes. All right. Leaps and bounds. <laughs> <laughs> Although German condiment porn that just strikes up images. So, so the guy. That's a relish. Took, I guess. He, uh. he, took, he took the ketchup out of his, his refrigerator, and it was that old that he. And then oh, I don't man. know. Straight. Well, maybe he bought it at one of those discount joints. Yeah. Know. You know, ketchup lasts a long time. Ugh. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's lots of other titles, but that's uh, it. Uh, yeah, I was short discussion today. You're right. That's uh, was meritocracy. Was that actually proposed? Because meritocracy, <laughs> <laughs> my favorite form of government. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm. Tinovac was on fire too. I gotta... Yeah, what else did we have though? No, oh, well, of... if you really want to know, um, we had ketchup on best practices, <laughs> which is really quite amazing. Yes. Bio cow. Um, let's see. Fixing computerized calling, parentheses FCC. Uh, people. Governments are made of people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I do know. like, I am a fan of step back government. We got this. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Sit down. Poverty. Canvas. We got it. We got this. Yeah. Let's see. 57 show. Oh, maybe this is the winner. Wait, 57 what? 57? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Oh, good. Nice. Oh. I'm looking. I'm looking. No dingo jokes. Those are insensitive. Um. Robocops. Cut down on robo texts. Um, by Hookow, I for one welcome our internet government. <laughs> <laughs> so those are the ones. But I, there are really two. Uh, well, I do like catch up on best practices. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, yeah, but we have a runaway hit. Yeah. So Sometimes thank you, you Tinvec. Have to honor the runaway. I uh, I want to get one of those Bit Nation passports. Oh no! Doesn't that sound fantastic? Yeah. But. But that's the thing, though, is what we want is not a passport. You know what I'm saying? Well, so it's like the anti-passport. Right, right. The idea is that all it's it's basically saying what this d does is verify that you exist as a person at the place and time that you said you exist. Mm. Which is, I'm like, that's actually better than a passport, right? Kind yeah. of is. It's and actually the the blockchain and all of that. It's a way better identity system than our current model. Right. Oh, let me check your birth certificate got a piece of paper at a hospital somewhere yeah where else could you have been born i think we learned that doesn't work <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nobody believes it anyway nobody believes it anyway you have one. did you get the hacker passport when you were down at the warehouse i don't think i did okay next time you're down i'm gonna have to hook you up with the hacker passport i have a, i have my id badge my security badge mm mm-hmm the, is Len the, just very, very still, or is he frozen? No, I, no he's moving. Very, I was, very I was reading. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I was, was going to say, that's 
like this, the topics today were so good, and I was going to say I'm not going to take this sitting down, but but I got to out myself. I am. I I tore my ACL, so oh, oh, no. uh, oh is that it. yeah? So how are you doing? Are you feeling better? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to get an MRI next week and, and <laughs> see, or I'm going to get an fMRI. In fact, a f- mm. functional functional my, yeah. Is that right? I, I'm or is it just like your brain? MRI man. I'm just limping along. Really bummed out about that. F the MRI. F the MRI. So the weather here is pretty awesome, I have to say. Uh, I'm going swimming later today. I'm pretty excited about it. Brag much? Yeah, no joke. <laughs> Whereas the rest of us, in fact, the North America current index is 96 with average pings in the mid-30s, slower response times from South America, and nearly a tenth of a second from down under. Your peak usage time should extend it about 5.30 today. Back to you, Tom. <laughs> and now to Len with weather. I almost uh, said sports, and then I was like, no. Uh, I, <laughs> I actually uh, looked at my the weather this, today, and I was like, what's it going to be like? And I said, oh, it's going to be 90 later. Wow, that's going to be super, super hot. And then I realized I was looking at the uh, weather forecast for Los Angeles and not for Cleveland. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's like 60 degrees here, and I'm like, hmm, I don't see it being 90 today. That's kind of strange. And I actually sweated on my run for the first time in a month. Matt and I are going on a, at a, for a swim in a pool that, unlike many pools in the world, is 10 feet deep at the deep end. Ooh, that's how deep our pool was when I was growing up. The, like, it's pu- so the exciting. City pool. Yeah. It's not a fancy, yeah, it's a city pool. It's not a fancy pool. Uh, so don't, don't think I'm going to some fancy place. I'm going to the $6 city pool. <laughs> that's where you get the 10 foot deep, though. That's right. They're the only ones the willing ones to the take insurance. the liability. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I gotta get going, guys. All Bye, right, man. Glenn. Enjoy Thank the rigatoni. So I will. Thank you so much. Rigatoni. Take care, everybody. Stay, uh, stay cool. Stay warm. I will. <laughs> Bye. Oh, and uh, work on your fallout shelter this weekend. I yeah. will. I have been actually building mine. I've, I've had to do it three times because I've killed people multiple oh. times. <laughs> yeah, po- the apocalypse is hard. It is. It's very difficult. Yeah. It's very difficult to balance everything. All right. I got to get going. Uh, Cheers. Bye. I'm exporting. Doopy doop, derpy derp. This is my exporting tune. Exporting more than meets the eye. <laughs> no, no, you got to do it every day. He's rendering, rendering. Oh, our render song was different. The render, oh, song, render song. Our render song was render, 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 and we just did that ad infinitum. <laughs> you know, I would posit that any firm that has ever had to do rendering has a render song. Yeah. I think that everybody uh, listening and watching should post their render songs. Mm-hmm. Let's create a, a an album of various Ooh. artists. Yeah. You know, the oh, best yeah. best rendering songs of the internet. Yeah. I'll do the music video. It will be a progress bar. That always <laughs> reminds me of the, the client song, the ad client song. You ever heard this? No. What is this? When so you're like trying to connect it. to the domain controller? Um, no, like not that kind of client, like advertising clients. Oh. Like the client. And ah. it's a really funny thing about like what happens when someone who doesn't know video uh, watches someone edit, like watches a draft of a video and asks all these terrible, terrible questions that make people pull their hair out, and I can't find it, but it's really funny. Those, those numbers in the bottom right that are counting up when the video is playing, are those, those gonna aren't going to be in the finished product, right? Also, yeah, it's a, a whole song. Long. Yeah, it's a whole song about that. It's really <laughs> That's funny. great. Uh, my favorite IT song must be F disk format reinstall, do da, do da. F disk <laughs> format reinstall, all do da day. Ron, Derek's boot, and Nuke. <laughs> wow, yes. Do that. <laughs> Give it the RCMP wipe. <laughs> RCMP wipe. <laughs> oh, there's another amazing one. Hey, they, they dropped a D-band reference on uh, Silicon Valley season finale. Oh, did they really? Oh, yeah. fantastic. I, I'm two episodes behind, but uh, I keep getting called out whenever the Carla's um, Hack 5 stickers on her laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very excited about that. That's cool. And supposedly, though, they, they messed up a lot of the stuff that a lot of the advice we gave them for the uh, hacking episode, they just didn't use. They, they 
skated past. I think they went with the more comical effect of holding down the delete key. Yes, they did. Which has I don't understand how it could delete stuff that it can't. They're receiving it was it. that that, that was car- that was a cartoon thing, and you know what? I was fine with it. I was like, yeah, not not actually going to happen, but okay, we're in cartoon land now, so yeah, worth worth the guff, worth the laugh. But yeah, um, no, that, that was my first reaction. Was like, oh, really? That's what it is? Because that wouldn't actually work. <laughs> Also, did you see that Mark Marin interviewed the president and the president came to his garage, which makes me so very happy? Oh, yeah? That's amazing. It's going to be on live Monday. I wonder Monday. what the sweep of his garage was like. Yeah, they had to put up the, all the usual Secret Service procedures at Mark Marin's cat ranch. Right. <laughs> Great. So that's exciting. For yeah, June here, I'll 19th. post my favorite to IRC. The one-liner, I hope, not get kicked from channel for too much. There we go. It goes on and on, but you guys know that one. The hits of rendering collected together for the first time. Who does those? Isn't it like Time Time Warner? Or? KTEL or uh, Time Life. Time Life. Oops. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Now that's what I call rendering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And what else is going on? Filters on that. Any, anything going on this weekend? Uh, I'm going to try to heal. <laughs> We're going to try to see uh, Inside Out. Ooh, cool. Which, I, when it first, the trailer first came out, I said, we should go see that. That looks really good. And Eileen was like, nah, I don't know, I don't know. And then finally, she met the director. And now she's like, yeah, we should go see Inside Out. I'm like, really? You have to actually meet the director in person <laughs> before you'll see a movie now? Is that where you've gone? You've gone that Hollywood? Mm-hmm. Hollywood! <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I think that's what we'll do tomorrow. Cool. What are you going to do? I'm going to rest. Rice. Because you've no, created sorry. the world. You gotta you gotta get compression yes. in there. Yeah. You gotta get some ice in there. Don't forget the elevation, it's important. Yeah. I'm just gonna rest. I'm just gonna take it easy. I'm gonna get a few things done, but I'm mostly gonna rest. And then I'm gonna start prepping for next week. I slept till nine today. Nine. Nice. That's terrible. No, that's great. I wake up at six thirty. <laughs> that sounds awesome. I um. Yesterday I went from Burbank to the West Side to uh, a fabulous restaurant where I had a fabulous but very intense like every day was filled every part of the day was filled with fabulous but intense conversation and at the end of the day I came home I was like had no voice and was like hey how are you Matt good night and I fell asleep <laughs> this is one of those like everywhere you go you're having lots of chat. Le chat. Le chat. Actually, what we did have, me and my friend, was an amazing dinner at an amazing restaurant. And you just can't ask for better than that. Good conversation. Really great roast chicken. What's better? Was it a restaurant named after what I proposed could be a uh, obsolete form of government? Yes, it was. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm delicious. hiding the name of your... No, I was at Republic. It's okay. I uh, it wasn't. It was just unbelievable. There are pictures up on Instagram. Um, I'm taking Matt there for his birthday because it was that yummy. Oh, I see. W. Scott is one had the same. Now that's what I call rendering. <laughs> All right, I have published the show, and I believe in my heart. That I published it correctly. Yay. Do you, do you guys think so? Uh, it's out there, though. So there you go. And uh, what's the... Uh... So it's youtube.com slash daily... No. New, it, new, tech news, news show. show. Right. Yes. Yeah. Booyah. Boom. 
Mm, but it puts in the slash user for you. It sure does. Free. You had to pay extra for yeah. that or anything. Well, no. I mean, I go to youtube.com slash hack5, and it's actually it sh it's the same place where if you go to youtube.com slash user slash hack5 Darren. I didn't think YouTube was going to be a thing. I just made it hack5 Darren. Oh, no, they had a limitation. You had to be at least six characters in your name. Oh. So I was like, all right. You're a character. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, cool. You could, you could probably get a vanity name. I don't know. You know anybody over at YouTube? Nobody who can help with that. <laughs> Bummer. <laughs> That's the thing. I have these questions about YouTube all the time as an actual YouTube user, and I was like, I don't know. Those guys are in <laughs> San Bruno. <laughs> oh, I have to do the show notes, don't I? Yeah, Roger's Oops. out today. All right. He uh, he helped with the prep of the show, but he had to he had to take uh, his daughter to the baby place. I forgot. All right, let me do that. Where they I'll fix babies, his robotic I daughter. I'll do that. Do androids dream of electric daughters? Mm-hmm. You Blade Runner. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anything good else? Stuff. We good? We I think we're good. We're good. I'm, yeah. Yes. You guys want anything? And I'd be proofing. I'm going to run upstairs and grab something. Uh, yeah. But uh, bills. stay tuned for Current Geek immediately following Condiment Geek. <laughs>